Hello, and welcome to the Power of Authority podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Prince. Each week, you'll hear tips, stories, and inspiration from people who are leveraging the power of authority in their business, leadership, and life. It's time to get your story out of your head and onto paper so that you can grow your business, make a difference, and build your authority. After all, you can't spell authority without author. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Power of Authority podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Prince, and I am really excited about our guest today. It is a longtime friend of mine and somebody that I know is just going to bring you so much awesome information and wisdom to help you to claim the power of your own authority. So let me tell you about my friend, Howard Partridge. Howard is the president of Phenomenal Products, Inc., a business coaching company that helps organizations communicate more effectively with their teams. Howard is also executive vice president and director of training operations for Ziggler, Inc., the company founded by motivational legend Zig Ziggler. So welcome to the show, Howard. Thank you, Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm so excited. Yes, I'm so excited that you're my guest because you and I go, we go way back. Uh, it, you know, I was, it, it feels even longer than what it, what it really has been. It's been about seven or eight years ago that we met up at the Ziegler headquarters. And I remember meeting you, you were there to, you were the guest on the Ziegler success 2.0 podcast or, or show at yep, the time. That's right. And mm-hmm. I was the host and yep. I, I don't even remember what you presented on, but I, I just remember just instantly connecting with you. And, you know, we have a lot in common. Of course, we both love the beach and so much yep, more, yep. but we do share a very, very important passion. And that is our passion for keeping the legacy of the late Zig Ziglar alive. So tell me yep. a little bit about where that passion that you have for Zig Ziglar started from. You bet. So really, it actually started uh, when I was growing my first business. I was too positive, I think, for this group of people that I was involved with. <laughs> and they literally laughed at me and said, who do you think you are, Zig Ziglar or somebody? And at that time, I'd never met Zig Ziglar. I met him, you know, five years later at one of those big, you know, conventions. And yeah. Uh, and then five years later, I called on uh, Ziegler. Zig Ziegler came and spoke at my conference. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, I think it was after that. It was two thousand. That was two thousand eight. I think it was the next year when I met you. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing some video webcasts for them. And as you uh, mentioned earlier, before we started the show, that you and I just really hit it off. And you know, it's just such a complete philosophy. And, and as you mentioned, I went on to be the exclusive small business coach for Ziegler and the executive vice president of training operations. I pretty much helped Tom run the company today. Yeah. But it's been a great journey. And the reason that it doesn't seem that uh, it seems like longer is because we do so much together every single year. <laughs> so we do so much. It's like, Oh, that was only a year ago. Oh, my gosh. You know? I know. Yeah. No, and I feel so grateful for that because, uh, you know, it started because of Zig. But so much of my story is is really founded on what Zig did for me. And I know for you, too. And and we both share that passion to inspire other people, you know, because you and I, we're no different from anyone else. But, you know, when you when you apply a lot of the things that Zig taught and, and really you know, focus on, you know, doing things for other people, as Zig would, would always say, you can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. That That's when you start to see things, you know, really take root. And I am just, I'm so grateful for you because I've learned so much from you through the years, uh-huh. uh, not just in marketing, and we'll talk about that, but, you know, just a lot of other things, life lessons. And, you know, I'm very, very blessed to be able to MC your conferences and, and just yes. be a part and of the, uh, your, your inner circle. And so, so I'm excited because I, I want to dive right in because I know you have, you have, we have Perfect. so much information that I know that you're going to help uh, our listeners with, but I know one of your other passions aside from Zig Ziglar and really wanting to keep that legacy alive is you have a passion for small business owners. Tell me about Absolutely. that. Well, so first of all, I am a small business owner. I started my company out of the truck of my car when I was 23 years old, over 35 years ago with wedding money. And the first few years, I mean, I 
you know, I share with business owners, uh, when you go into business, you, you uh, have all these big dreams. You, you want to make more money, but you also want to be your own boss, chart your own, own course, have a little more free time. But the brutal reality uh, that I experienced and probably most of the audience, if you're a business owner, experience is that you end up working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The business runs you rather than you running the business. And in 1997, uh, the amazing thing is I read a book that changed my life. And that's why I so appreciate not only what you do for our inner circle community and, you know, you're just such a big part of that and the Ziegler community, but the fact that you're helping people um, get their story out of their head and onto paper and doing what you're doing because books really do change lives. And in this particular case, I read a book that opened my eyes to the possibilities and I learned two secrets. One is that you uh, have to have systems in your business and so that's what I do is I help people, I help small business owners develop simple systems in their business so that they can run the business rather than it running them. And then the other big thing that I learned is that the, the one and only reason your business exists is to be a vehicle to help you achieve your life goals. And, and so if you're not clear on your life goals, if you're not passionate about your life goals, if you don't understand how to 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 approach that and get a clear vision for your life you're not going to build the right business because every single thing that you do or don't do in your business is going to affect your life and then then i learned some about leadership along the way wrote a book about that and i have another book coming up february the 4th that will be released on amazon and here's what i learned michelle both in business and in life and it is this the number one reason that people don't reach their biggest dreams and goals. Now, remember, as a business owner, you've got this dream of being your own boss, charting your own course, you know, plenty of money. And that doesn't really happen uh, for most small business owners. They not only don't have any time with their family, but they're in many cases losing money or barely getting by. And what I learned is that many times people know what to do, but they just don't do it. And that's the number one reason that they don't reach their goals or certainly their bigger goals. And I call that FTI, Failure to Implement. That's the name of my newest book, uh, Failure to Implement, that will be coming out in uh, February. February 4th, it will be released on Amazon. That's and so awesome. Yeah. And so in that uh, book, I outlined 10 principles mm -hmm. that I got from you. <laughs> principles. That's one of uh, Michelle's teaching teachings, uh, principles. And here's the crazy thing about Michelle Prince and myself. It's like God is talking to us. He's having a conversation with us at the same time. And we don't even know it. Like, yep. I was sitting in Ziegler training under Michelle one day, and she was outlining all of her P's of <laughs> principles of performance. And I was like, I'm getting the same download. This is such confirmation. So that's why I uh, give you a lot of uh, acknowledgement in that uh, upcoming book, FTI, because it's really based the 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 principles in that book and 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 just that idea that uh that that you have to live by principles yes uh and and then of course phenomenal my my company name is phenomenal product thanks that's your so word <laughs> yeah 10 uh principles of what i call phenomenal performance so here's the deal i'll give you the whole uh thing in a nutshell okay all right i learned from mr zig ziglar uh, one of the things that I learned from him is that the secret ingredient of success is desire. Mm -hmm. Desire. You have to want something. But many times people don't have that desire, whether it's in business or life or their career, because they don't have a vision and they can't see what's out there. They can't see the opportunities. And even if they can see them, and this is the real 
uh, bottom line of the whole thing, they won't believe it. Right. And the reason of that is the reason for that is because of what Mr. Zig Ziglar called a poor self image. So it happens from desire, but desire comes from a vision. But the only way you're going to have a compelling picture, a compelling uh, vision for the future is if you believe you accept that you're allowed to do this, you can do this, and I just need the know-how to do it. And the crazy thing is, is that sometimes even when people know that they're called to something, even when they know that they can do something, even when they know they, they know how to do something, they still don't do it. And so what that tells me, my experience tells me that, that, that somewhere deep inside there's a belief issue. Yes. I th- that is so critical. It. it is. It's a part of everything. Yeah. And, you know, I even think about my own journey. So, and you know my story very well, but, you know, when I wrote my first book, uh, actually the years prior to writing my first book, I secretly wanted to write a book. I really did. I really knew mm-hmm. I wanted to share my story, even if it was just for my family. But I really struggled with belief for a long time. And I remember, so you know, working for Zig Ziglar right out of college, pretty extraordinary experience. But I also had a little bit of a comparison issue. So when I thought about writing a book, I instantly would subconsciously, but say to myself, well, you're no Zig Ziglar, you know, (laughs) who's going to read your book compared to Zig? And one day I I had this epiphany kind of moment. And it, it really, the epiphany was just a shift in my belief because for all those years that I kept saying, you know, who do you think you are? Instantly, I just had this moment of, well, wait a minute, why not me? Because I I have a heart to help people. I'm not Zig Ziglar. I will never be. But I do have my own version of that, of my story, that if it resonates with one person, then it's worth telling. And it's just shocking to me to see my life now. It's 10 years ago, I started my, I wrote that book and I started my company. And I think about it all the time, you know, had I not gotten over that limiting belief, you know, I'd still be selling software, (laughs) you know, I'd still be. And, you know, I started my business while I was still working another job because I didn't have the systems in place. And that's something I have to I have to give you total credit for, because you you really helped me in my early years Uh, when we met. I think I guess it was my business was maybe two years old, two or three years old. And so I was still struggling. I started a quote unquote business because I loved it, not because I wanted to run a business. And I remember you right. you sharing with me systems and talking about P&Ls and all the things that I kind of wanted to just la, 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 you know, I don't want to hear it. I don't right, want to talk right, about right, it. Can't, right. can't I just do the fun stuff? And and you really opened my eyes to what it means. And, and that was a big pivotal shift in my company because I started to see it as a company. Thanks to you. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, look what you're doing right now, and you're helping so many people. And the thing is, is, is had you let that belief, and that's one of the principles that I share in the book is, in fact, the very first one is the potential principle mm-hmm. and uh, how you uh, understanding your potential impacts phenomenal performance. Mm-hmm. So. Yes who you think you are. And that's really the question is, who do you think you are? And that's the question that people ask me uh, when I was, we were talking earlier, when I was trying to build my business, I wanted to be positive. And, and, and uh, I went to this group, they had a severe case of thinking, stinking thinking. And, and I had a positive attitude. They said, who do you think you are? Zig Ziglar or somebody? I didn't even know Zig Ziglar at the time. But the crazy thing is the most important thing that I learned from him is that you are what you are and where you are because of what has gone into your mind. You can change what you are and where you are by changing what goes into your mind. And then you have to have a picture. And the, the picture principle says that, uh, that a compelling picture uh, imagines phenomenal performance. If, if you don't see it, you can't achieve it. If you right. can't see it, you can't reach it. You have to see the reaching of the goal, as Mr. Ziegler said, before you actually reach the goal. So the question is, what do you see? Then we go to number three, which is the purpose principle. And the the knowing your purpose inspires phenomenal performance because 
now you know that that I was born to win, as Zig Ziglar yes. said. I'm supposed to do this. I have a vision, and and I'm supposed to do this. You know, Mr. Ziglar said that man was created and designed for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Then number four, the biggie is is the people principle, and having the right people around you. That's why I wrote that book that's sitting on your desk right there, The Power of Communities, because we need the right people around us to support us, to encourage us, and to help us to be accountable, whether that's to write a book, whether that's to build a business, whether that's to you know advance in our career, whether that's to lose weight, whether that's to be more financially secure. In all of these areas, we all want to be more, do more, and have more. We want to, that's what I call phenomenal performance, right? Yes. So we all want to perform at a higher level in whatever it is. And then after that, I have six more principles after that. One of them is the process principle. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to have a system. Yes. I need to have, if I'm going to perform at a higher level in my personal life, I have to have a system. Yes. And as you mentioned earlier, naturally, we don't want to... <laughs> We don't want to commit to a system. We don't want to commit to accountability and uh, P&L and vision uh -huh. and, and planning and all this another principle, planning principle. But here's what I learned. In fact, you were looking at the back of that book and the mm -hmm. first uh, endorsements from a man by the name of Dave Ramsey on that book uh -huh. right there. And so he endorsed uh, that, that book of mine. And Dave Ramsey says this. If you'll live for just a little while, like no one else will, you can live the rest of your life like no one else can. Yes. Very powerful. It's so powerful. And, and you know, I think I'm glad you brought up the power of community because, you know, of all the books you've written, I, actually, I, I love them all for different reasons, but I really like this yeah. one. And I've seen you put this in into action. I mean, what you've done with the your inner circle, which is, by the way, Howard has this amazing community of people that are business owners to support one another. And that's it's all based on this power of community, because like you said, we can't do it alone. What would you say to a business owner that is seeking community or maybe they don't know they even need community, but maybe they're a business owner that's isolated like many of us are? What would you say to them? I had that experience just this morning. I was doing a webinar to, uh, as you know, we've got lots of different groups. You and I have a book writing group together. I have a group of new business owners. We have a group of new members. We have a group of people studying the Ziegler philosophy. I have different levels. But the thing is, is that there was a brand new business owner on there. And she was just like, this is so helpful because I feel all along all along. It's one thing to have the knowledge, yeah. right? But the people principle says this, that having the right people around you influence phenomenal performance because we need people around us to say, you know what? You can do this. That's right. You were made for this. You, you're a winner, right? We need, And I had people uh, in my life in that book. I share three different people, at least many people mm -hmm. in that book that had an impact in my life. And, you know, for example, my business was in a lot of debt. I had great service, great people, great brand and everything, but it wasn't making money. And a lady by the name of Ellen Rohr came along, right? And uh, so Ellen. there was a time when, when my business was stuck and mm -hmm. I just couldn't, uh, even though I had a predictable, profitable business that runs on its on its own. I had started this new business, Phenomenal Products, in the training and coaching space. And here I was a slave to my business again. That's right. And, uh, and a guy by the name of Mark Ehrlich, who worked with Michael Gerber for since 1977, I met him through Michael Gerber, mm -hmm. dropped into my life and he became my uh, my tormentor, not yes. my mentor, my tormentor. And he knew enough about human nature that this boy is hard headed and I'm going to have to ask him some hard questions. So every week over the phone, I paid him to berate me, <laughs> to, to, to torment me. Why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Do you really have a vision or are we just playing around here? Or do yes. you really? And it's like, on the other side of it, I had another coach, good, good cop, bad 
cop, Rick Jones, who was with Del Carnegie for 33 years, owned the Houston franchise for over 20 years. He's part of my team now. And he's on the other side saying, you're as good as yes. any of them and better than most. Go get them, Tiger. You know? And you need both. You really need both. You need I, both. You yeah. do. So yeah. I'm curious. So we, you know, we call the show The Power of Authority. And of course, yeah. I love to help people to become authors. But it's so much more than a, writing a book. It's really about taking what you know personally and professionally and getting it out there so that you can make a difference. That's authority, yeah. right? But you have written books and you are an author. So I'm curious, how has writing a book helped to build your authority or credibility or your business or the ability to impact more people? How has that done it for you? Well, there's uh, we could do a lot of shows just on that question alone. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've learned a lot about this from you, that the things that you share that I didn't want to write my first book, but my tormentor sat yes. me down in Las Vegas. He told me something way back then that I would later learn again from you. And that is that you got to get your story out on paper. That's your business card, you, you know people, your story matters. That's what you say. And, and he may have probably, he probably used different words. I'm using your words now, but, but, and I was like, no, 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 no. I want to build this big, huge business and be yeah. hugely popular. And then, you know, put this book out and it's just going to be a, an instant bestseller. Listen, I had some stinking thinking. Yes. And he said, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. What happens is you write a book, people learn your story, and then they're going to come and they're going to support you. They're going to want to know more. And, and that's exactly what happened. So what happened was when people learned my story that, A, uh, I'm originally uh, from what I call L.A., lower <laughs> Alabama. And I uh, grew up on welfare in, in Mobile, Alabama. Seven kids crammed a little 600 square foot shack and the roof on this house was so bad that every time it rained, we had to get out all the pots and pans to catch the leaks. My mother fed us on $100 a month from the welfare department. And, and you know, I got kicked out of the house by my stepdad, my third dad. At, at 18 years old, I had 25 cents in my pocket and took a Greyhound bus yeah. to Houston, Texas. And so on the one side of it, if someone like that, you know, from that environment can become phenomenally successful. And today yes. I truly feel that I live a dream life, not just mm -hmm. the, the stuff, but the people that are in my life. I'm such a blessed man. Yeah. And uh, with the relationships that I have and that, that you can, I can build a turnkey business. So in that one book alone, I covered both the life and the business. It's called the seven secrets of a phenomenal life. And uh, and people were like, oh, this is really, really good. And I was already doing coaching. So that just drew more and more people mm -hmm. to me. And like you said, it gives you credibility. Yes. The amazing thing was, is that the way that that so he convinced me I needed to write a book. Mm -hmm. I went to speak for one of our fellow friends, Bob Berg, and I was doing a keynote for him. And I was I told the audience, there was a couple hundred people there. And I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing a book uh, with this content, you know, how many of you think I should write that book? And this isn't going to happen to most people, but a guy walked up to me and said, I want to publish that book for you. <laughs> I know that, you know, but it can happen to you because you have a lady sitting in front of you right now that will publish your book for you mm -hmm. and help you get it out. So you don't have to go around searching for someone. Most authors get turned down for a uh, by a publisher, even a small publisher, because they get so many requests. But here's the other thing. That publisher isn't necessarily going to do. I'm grateful because yeah. I'm busy and I'm, I'm blessed financially that I can just, you know, and this is what you do so well is that they can just either get you to help them write their book mm -hmm. and get the book right, get it printed, or you just do the whole thing for them. Right. Whatever it takes, just get it done. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's so many different ways yeah. to get to the same the the same same end result of having a book. Yeah. But it's about yeah. what you do with it, and it's you know it's about your story. And and I know that people connect to your story when you stand on stage and you talk about that because they see the Howard that is successful now. But when we hear the story of where you started, and like Zig, I mean Zig, that's how we we everyone loves Zig because he shared his stories. How he didn't start out 
exactly where he wanted to start out, but he ended up really well. And we only have about a minute left, but I, I, you know, I want to start kind of where we started or end where we started. And, you know, you and I both, uh, you know, we love Zig and we, and it's not even just the man Zig, it's, it's what the company stands for. And you are so integrated into the company now to really help millions and millions and millions of people, which is phenomenal. <laughs> Can't think of a better word, but I'm curious if Zig were sitting here today, what would he say to you? What would he say to me? What would he say to you about what you're doing with Tom and the team and what Ziggler is trying to accomplish? What would he say? What would he be most proud of that's happening right now? You know, first of all, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I know. I thought of it as I started asking the question. Yeah. We're both criers. Number so two, Number two. <laughs> yeah. Number two. Number two. I don't think anybody has ever asked me that question. Hmm. So here's the answer. He would probably say, thank you for helping my boy out. Because oh. he loved that boy. He loved his son. He sure Who, does. By the way, is the master crier of all of us. <laughs> it's when I first when I first met Tom, I first got in touch with Ziegler and I went up there to to figure out how to start a relationship and and Margaret uh, told me what they were doing with the military and she saw tears going down my eyes and she said I think you need to meet Tom he's a crier too <laughs> no she didn't say that but, but we all yeah, know it Tom, yeah, but, uh, Tom, Tom was yeah, actually so my she, very first guest so oh he went cool cool yeah. so yeah so Anyway, I think that that's probably what he would say is thank you for helping my boy out. I know he would. And I am so excited about the future. I mean, it just continues to get better and better. And you're a huge, huge part of that. And um, I am so excited. OK, so I, I could talk to you all day long, Howard, but we have to wrap up. So how can people get a hold of you? If they want to learn about Inner Circle, about things with Ziggler. Yep. What, what's the best way? Yeah, just go to HowardPartridge.com, HowardPartridge.com, and be sure to get my new book, FTI, Failure to Implement, available on Amazon February the 4th, because you can know everything about everything, but until you actually implement, ain't nothing going to happen. That's right. That's right. Well, Howard, thank you so much for being on the show. I so appreciate my you. My pleasure. Thank you, right. Michelle. Appreciate you. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. This is the Power of Authority podcast. If you are ready to claim your authority and get out there and share your story to make an impact, then get our free copy of my latest book, The Power of Authority. Just go to thepowerofauthority.com. Just pay shipping and we'll send it right out to you. Thanks again. Just remember, you have a story. Your story matters. And it's time to get it out of your head onto paper so that you can start making an impact and building your authority. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Power of Authority podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and find me on social media and let me know what did you like best about this episode. And don't forget, share this with a friend. We'll see you soon.